Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Black Coffee by Charles Osborne, but also by Agatha Christie. So basically the story here is that Charles Osborne is one of Christie's biographers, he's also a novelist in his own right, and Black Coffee is a play that Christie wrote, and he basically asked if he could write the novelization, got permission from the Agatha Christie estate, and then the resultant thing is this book. So I'm going to start by reading the blurb. Black Coffee, adapted as a novel by Charles Osborne. The inventor, Sir Claude Amory, is left with a bitter taste in his mouth when the formula for his powerful new explosive is stolen by someone staying in his own house. Seeking a swift remedy, Sir Claude locks the doors and switches off the lights to allow the thief to replace the formula, no questions asked. But the darkness brings death, and Hercule Poirot is left to unravel a tangle of family feuds, old flames and suspicious guests to find the killer and prevent a catastrophe. So I wasn't too sure what I was going to make of this because obviously it's not written by Agatha Christie. Obviously the plot is, but the actual novelization isn't. Turns out I needn't have worried too much. He's obviously, well, he's familiarized himself with all of her work and her life and all of this stuff as part of his kind of duty as a, as a biographer. And he does really kind of nail the tone. You, you can tell it's not Christie writing, but it's a pretty close approximation. Certainly better than I think I could do anyway. And so for that, I did appreciate it. He also included a lot of the different, uh, I don't know, just some of the different, like the colonialist outlook that Christie had and some of these other bits and bobs as well. I'm going to go through and, and check off some of my notes. What I will say is I don't know whether it's just because the play is well known or whatever, but I did find it quite predictable, especially when you get this bit where he turns off the light. And it's like, well, you're going to die now, aren't you? Everyone dies when they turn off a light in an Agatha Christie book. So here we have, this This will help you to place the context of, of when this is set, which bear in mind, when was Osborne writing this? First published in 1998. Uh, well, Aunt Caroline, Barbara replied, you are a Victorian, you know, born when the old queen still had a good 20 years of life ahead of her. You're thoroughly representative of your generation, and I dare say I am of mine. I'm in no doubt as to which I prefer, her aunt began, only to be interrupted by Barbara, who chuckled and said, I think the Victorians were too marvellous. Fancy telling children that babies were found under gooseberry bushes. I think it's sweet. My rice pudding is burning. This is why you shouldn't leave stuff on the hob while you're recording, but hey-ho. Okay, here's another little exchange that I enjoyed. Barbara, you know I disapprove of these alcoholic stimulants, Miss Amory exclaimed with a shudder. My dear father always said. I don't know what he said, replied Barbara, but absolutely everyone in the family knows that dear old great uncle Algernon had the reputation of being a three bottle man. At first, Miss Amory looked as if she might explode, but then the slight twitch of a smile appeared on her lips and all she said was, gentlemen are different. Barbara was having none of this. Then I'm the least different, she said. Or at any rate, I can't imagine why they should be allowed to be different. They simply got away with it in those days. I also like this little exchange. This is all towards the beginning as well. Uh, they're talking about lipstick now. And uh, her aunt sniffed disapprovingly. I know, of course, she said, that one's lips are inclined to chap if one has been out in a high wind and that a little grease is advisable. Lanolin, for instance, I always use. Barbara interrupted her. My dear aunt Caroline, take it from me. A girl simply can't have too much lipstick on. After all, she never knows how much of it she's going to lose in the taxi coming home. So here we have a little bit of talk about this new explosive formula that's been developed. As I was saying, Sir Claude continued, the force of Amorite, as I call it, is such that where we have hitherto killed by thousands, we can now kill by hundreds of thousands. How horrible, exclaimed Lucia with a shudder. My dear Lucia, her father-in-law smiled thinly at her as he spoke. The truth is never horrible, only interesting. Here we have some of the uh, casual racism that kind of it, do, it is a thing in Christie's books, you know, from the from the time that she was writing in. And actually, in the last one that I read, she described uh, knives as an Italian weapon. And in this one, it goes, Remember the Borgias? Poison is a very Italian sort of crime. They're astonishingly clever, these foreigners. Of course, I shouldn't be talking this way, as though the thing were a foregone conclusion. But what else is one to imagine? Well, other than that... <laughs> The, the, the foreigner did it. You got here, Poirot's having a cigarette, and he goes, You are sure that my smoke is not deranging you, mademoiselle? asked Poirot, holding up his cigarette. Oh, no, not at all, Miss Amory assured him. I think gentlemen ought to smoke. I mean, bearing in mind this was written in 1998, I do feel as though he's captured just some of the attitudes of the times, you know, at the times that it was set. There's another great quote here. I knew this was going to happen. I'm not going to say what happens, but something happens near the end and this character goes, there is so much suffering already in the world. I cannot bear to think of any more. And you know it's always going to ha happen what happens there. But I, I don't want to give it away. I also don't want to ramble on too much about this. What I will say, it's only about 180 odd pages. I would love to read the original play this is based on and to also go and see it. 
But um, I mean, I'm trying to read everything Agatha Christie ever published, and by this is kind of an extension of that, I guess. I think she is credited as the author, and then he's the interpreter or something like that. So technically, it's not even by Charles Osborne, according to you know the official official line on that or whatever. But um, yeah, it's well written. It's a good little Poirot story. Actually, it's better than some Agatha Christie books when she when she wasn't at her best. I, uh, I eventually gave it a 4 out of 5, actually, and would recommend reading this. Whether you're... Well, yeah, if you're a Christie fan, read it. If you're not a Christie fan, probably read some Agatha Christie first, and then maybe get to this when you start to run out. As for me, I've read about 40 or 50 Agatha Christie books now, so I am starting to run out. And, uh, yes, yeah, so that's why I picked it up, and it was very good, too. So, yeah, short but sweet review for today. I don't want to keep my reviews going on as, as long as they have done in the past. I know my review of Agatha Christie's autobiography, which I'll link to below, that came to about 45 minutes. This one, I'm on about 10 minutes of filming, and I reckon it will come close to six or seven. So, hopefully, it's a nice little bite-sized introduction to what this book is, what it's all about, and uh, whether I think you should read it. Spoiler alert, yes, you probably should at some point. So there we have it on that note. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.